In the previous video, when I talked about developing an interview guide, I talked quite a lot about making your participants feel comfortable and relaxed. But how do we do that? So interview questions aside, what do we do during the interview to make them feel comfortable? Coming up in this video. When you have decided your interview structure and uh, you develop your interview guide, what do you do next? What do you do during the interview? Of course, you start by testing your audio recording equipment, which uh, tends to fail us when it's most needed. Uh, you may also remind your participants about the aims of your study and, of course, thank them for participating. But these are the obvious things and they have been covered uh, to various extent in my previous videos and my blog articles and generally in the literature. What is more important, what is crucial in fact, is that your main goal during the interview, especially at this early stage, is to develop good rapport with your participants. So you want to make them comfortable around you and comfortable in this interview setting in general, which quite often is something unusual uh, to your participants. So uh, therefore this may result in them feeling stressed and anxious and uh, as a result, you will fail to collect the rich data you were hoping for. You want to convince them that you are generally a nice person and that you are genuinely interested in what they have to say. So you're not here just to collect your data and leave. You are here to hear their story. And this is very important because too often have I been interviewed and I felt like the interviewee, uh, sorry, the interviewer just doesn't care about my story, doesn't really care about what I have to say. They were just there to collect their data and this feels extremely discouraging if you are the participant and it results in you just uh, looking forward to the whole thing to finish. So what I want to do here is uh, share with you some tips that will help you make sure that your interviewees enjoy the whole process and you come out of the interview with rich data. Most people are anxious about the very fact that they are being audio recorded. So rather than pretending that this problem does not exist, I actually like to talk about it up front. So what I like to do is to explain that I understand that this is uh, unusual and I understand that this is stressful, but I also say that I am unfortunately the person who will be listening to it and who will be listening to my own voice on the recording. What is more, I explain that I will slow the recording down by 50% as I usually do and when I do it I actually sound like I'm drunk. So uh, this, uh, this little remark usually just kind of uh, helps me break the ice and uh, already makes them feel a little bit more relaxed in this situation. What I also explain is how the interview will be different from a regular conversation. So I explained that I will be less talkative, I will be listening to what they are saying and importantly that I will not be evaluating what they are saying. So there is no right or wrong answer. Everything that they tell me is important and is interesting to me. What I also like to do is to switch the recording on early on before we actually get to the actual interview. So while we are still talking about uh, normal things or any kind of topic, uh, that is just natural and feels uh, natural and like I said is a kind of an icebreaker uh, the recording is on and they are already uh, getting used to being audio recorded so when the interview starts they still have to get used to this new role that I explained so to me being less talkative and mainly listening to them but usually by that time they feel more comfortable about being audio recorded it's very very important to listen more than you speak I myself have a problem with this because I like to talk. I do tend to treat these interviews as a conversation simply because I enjoy them so much. So I have to constantly remind myself not to talk that much, not just because what I say is not real data for me to analyze later, so there is no value in what I say, but more importantly to avoid kind of bias, to avoid influencing my participants' responses, for example. So always remember listen more than you speak during the interview. It is very very important to be flexible and responsive during the interview. It's one of the most important things. So don't just stick to your interview guide. 
if your participants, for example, are uh, start to talk about something that you are planning to cover in the later star, uh, part of the interview, uh, do not interrupt them to later come back to the topic, but actually listen to what they have to say. You may, you may just take that off your interview guide as something that has been discussed already, but never interrupt them and say, we'll come back to it later, right now I want to ask you about something else. And even if they go off topic, uh, arguably, and what I do is also let them speak. So again, so it feels natural. Of course, the reason will extend if it's completely off topic and they continue towards a completely different direction then I may gently remind them or may try to direct that conversation back to what it was supposed to be. But uh, remember that if they feel comfortable talking about this thing that is not necessarily, not strictly relevant to uh, your study, uh, you can still record it and you just don't have to transcribe it. You may just uh, make a note in your transcription saying that this was an irrelevant bit. So, so nothing really bad will happen. And I believe that uh, much more problematic is the situation when you just cut them off and say this is not important, let's not talk about it. And this leads to the next point. Try not to interrupt your participants or uh, try to interrupt them as little as possible. So even if they made or started to make an important point and then they moved uh, to discuss something else, you may still make a note to yourself, uh, reminding yourself to ask them later to clarify or expand on this topic, uh, rather than interrupting them straight away uh, if they are sharing something that they uh, potentially believe is important to share. Silence is not a bad thing and don't be afraid of silence. This is a problem it's, uh, that is characteristic not just uh, to interviews but also uh, in teaching. So in teacher training uh, courses or programs they quite often talk about silence, the importance of silence. So when you ask a question either in a class or in our case during the interview, don't be afraid if there is a longer period of silence. It doesn't mean that they don't uh, have anything to say, but quite often they are just trying to remember, trying to reflect. So don't uh, feel like something is wrong and don't try to fill that silence with uh, a number of probing questions or uh, by some other remarks. And finally, check again and again and again whether the recording is on. As I said, the equipment tends to fail us when it's most important. And I uh, personally had this situation when after an extremely interesting interview I realized that the recording was not on. And obviously in that situation you're not going to ask your participant to repeat everything, but rather you just try to remember and maybe make notes of uh, what has been said. But it's always better just to check your recording occasionally uh, during the interview. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you have any questions or any suggestions for what you do during the interview, feel free to put that in the comments. And in the previous, uh, in the next video, I'll talk about analyzing the interview data. So if you like this content and you don't want to miss the next video, consider subscribing. And when you have subscribed, there is a little bell button that will help you receive instant notifications for when I post the video.